In this tutorial, we're going to extend our introduction to for loops. We're going to go a little bit further. We covered a few things, so let's go ahead and open up a script. I'm going to save this. I want this to be our introduction to for loops, but I'm going to say extended. Because in this, we're going to talk about uh, using the control variable in calculations. Now, again, we're going to start with clear in CLC, clear out our command window in our, I'm sorry, our command window in our workspace. Not in that order, other way. But we're going to say, uh, okay, first I want to start with an array of information. It really doesn't matter what it is. So we'll say 9, 4, 7, 2, 6, 8. Okay, so this is my array. Now I want my for loop to repeat for i equals 1 to the number of elements there are in my array. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we'll go ahead and say 6. Okay, and the, the last in our introduction we just sort of displayed i, but we're not going to do that this time. This time we're going to build a new array. So we're going to say array 2 equals 2 times the element in array. And we won't suppress that because I do want to see what's happening. Um, and then up here, I want to, no, we'll leave that unsuppressed as well. We'll go ahead and run it and we'll see what the output is right down here in our command window. So I'm going to run this. I get that my original array right here, array is equal to 947268. Okay. So that makes sense. And then our first time through, we have that I equals one and array two equals two times array. There we go. And then we're going to loop back around. I equals two and I equals three. I equals four. I equals five. I equals six. Each time we're just going to make a copy of array. So all six of these instances that we ran our, our loop in each iteration produced the same outcome, which isn't ideal because what we're after here is we're going to extend our understanding of for loops so that we understand how to access independent elements in an array. This has a large amount of strategic use later on for right now. We just need to foundationally understand what we're dealing with. So here to the end of array, I'm going to add array i. So this is array two. Again, the flow of information goes from right to left. So we're going to multiply two times some value in array at location i. Now, because we have six elements and because they are one, two, three, four, five, six, we can use these values in the control array as indices to point to values in the array. Array, it's redundant, I know. But we'll go ahead and run it. Now the difference is we started with array and now we have array two equals 18, array two equals eight, array two equals 14, array two equals four. Well, we're doing nothing more than multiplying each one of these elements by two each time through the loop. That doesn't really help me a whole lot because, well, it might, all right? There are times where this may be called for, but one of the things that we need to be very careful of is understanding that right now, array two takes on a value with the first iteration of the loop, and then that value is overwritten with the second iteration, and then that value is overwritten with the third iteration, and then that value is overwritten by the fourth iteration, and then the fifth and the sixth. And we can see that in the end, array two equals 16, and over here in our workspace, array two equals 16. So array two carries a single value. Okay, so now we have several different, or two different ways of doing this, but I wanna go ahead and do this all three different ways. So in the beginning, um, I don't want to display array. I don't want to display this. I do wanna copy this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of it. I'm gonna paste it right down below. In our first iteration through, we didn't have the index. We're also not going to do this. We're just going to display array two. I want to examine the outcome uh, of each of these. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and move that. Let's cut it and move it right into our for loop. That way we can examine what's happening each time. Here I want to display array two. And right here I want to copy this entire thing, paste it right down below. And last, I want to say that array two at location i equals two times array at location i. So these are my three loops, okay? But I'm also gonna do what we did before. I wanna display a blank space because I wanna have a blank line between each one of these loops. And now to keep this docked, I don't have enough room to make this as clean as we have in the past. So we don't have blank lines in between each one of our for loops, but we do have a for loop and then we have a blank space. And then we have a for loop and we have a blank space. We have a for loop, okay. We're gonna display array two each time through, so now I'm just gonna run this. Let's take a look at what happens. All right, in the first, again, we made two, uh, a direct copy of array, but multiplied each element by two. We did that six times. In the second, we dealt with one element at a time, 
we multiplied each element by two, but we lost all of this information because in the end, all we saved was a value of 16. And then for the last one, uh, I'm sorry, the last loop works like this. We come in, i equals one. So that means that the value in array two at location i, and you know what, let's do this. Let's say this is array three, and this is array three, and this is array four, and this is array four. That way we can, ref we can reference them using different names. So I run this, here we go. So array two is nothing more than a direct copy of array one multiplied by two six different times. Array three, we say that the value array three equals two times the value in array one at location i. Now that i changes, so we look at the first location, the second location, the third location, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth location. And in the end, we have nothing more than two times eight, the value in the sixth location, so we have a value of 16. But with this last loop, this last loop works in the following way. Array four at location i, which is going to be one, equals two times the value in array i, which is position one, which is nine, so we start with an 18. And then the loop iterates, i equals two. Array four at location two equals two times array at location two. Array at location two is four. So this is two times four, which is eight. This is where this eight comes from, but we don't lose the value in the first position, so we save that 18. Now we're building the array with each iteration, two times seven in the third position two times two in the fourth position, two times six in the fifth position, two times eight, okay? Now this is three different ways to go through an array or to utilize a for loop to move through an array. The first one is somewhat redundant because we don't really need a for loop to do this, but the second and the third are ways that we can start nesting loops together to move through two, three, four, or n-dimensional arrays or nesting loops with logic so that we can start making decisions using these arrays. So that's what we're going to be working on next time. We'll be working on nesting. We'll do a sequence of videos, nesting logic and loops in, in separate orders, and then doing a few examples. So until next time.